This is Professor Esther Dillard with a mini media podcast. Today's lesson, learning the correct format of a video script and how to create one from scratch. A television or video news script is basically a map of what is said and seen on the screen. Producers and reporters write up news scripts as a way to develop their visual story. This map includes, number one, the words the reporter reads, the words the people interviewed say, the natural sound or music included on the piece, as well as descriptions of the images that are seen when people are speaking during the piece. When you are developing your story, a script is important because it can show you the elements you have, where you're going in the story, and how things fit together. Developing a story without a script is a bad idea. Many students try to do it. They say, well, I have everything in my head. But if you want to become a professional in this field of media, you have to be able to share your ideas in writing. This video is going to, number one, show you how to create the correct format for a script in Apple's Pages program and Microsoft Word. Explain elements that need to be included on the page of a typical script. Here is a typical script. On the left-hand side, you have information for video. This is where you put a description of what the viewer should see. You typically write down how long the image should stay in view on this side of the page. Sometimes you will see something like this. Numbers in brackets. This is time code. You will find time code on video clips in your editing software like Final Cut Pro 10, and you can often see it in your viewfinder on your camera. Here you can see the time code in Final Cut Pro 10. This shows you where in time on this particular video clip the shot exists. This helps the editor, usually you, to find the shot you want during editing so that you can complete your story. When you're putting together a story on deadline, time code is golden. If you write time code and the name of the clip, you won't have to pull your hair out looking for that one shot. One term you should know that often is seen on scripts is CG. This stands for Character Generator. It's an old term for a machine that was used in television production in the 1980s and 90s. These days, character generators aren't generally used, but the term still sticks. CG and the colon are used before the name of a person that you want to identify on the screen. A slash is usually used after the name, and then the person's title. This is the information that goes on the second line under the person's name, as you see here. Now to the right-hand side of the script. This area is for the audio information. What the audience hears should be written in this column. This can include what the reporter reads, what an interview subject says, natural sound like birds chirping, a horn honking, or music heard during the piece. All sound elements heard during your piece should be written out verbatim. That means every word written out. Another important element that you'll see on this side of the page in parentheses is the letters in with a colon and the numbers. This is what is referred to as the in cue. And the letters out with a colon is referred to as the out cue. The in cue shows the time code for when the person says the next words you read in quotations. The out cue shows where the sound ends in quotations. You use this in your video script so you can find your interviews quickly in your video clips and put them into your final piece. Often before you see out cue or in cue, you'll see the name of the clip where the sound is found. Now I will show you how to set up the format for a short script from scratch in Pages and Microsoft Word on your laptop. This is different than on an iPad. Doing it on an iPad does take a little longer and a little more patience. My suggestion is that you start your script on a laptop, save it, and then share it with yourself. Then if you want to continue it on an iPad later, it's a whole lot easier. In Pages, open up a blank page. Select Table at the top of the page. Select the third option with no headers. Then move your cursor down to the chevron at the bottom of the table. Select the down arrow until you have only one row. Then go to the end of the set of columns in the first row and select that chevron. Select the down arrow until you have only two columns. Now select the entire table by clicking on the right corner of the table. Select on the right side of the screen in the Format section the tab entitled Arrange. Under Text Wrap, select the down arrow. Then select the down arrow under the option that says In Line with Text and then select the word None. Now go to the very top of the interface where you see the words File, Edit, Insert, Format, Arrange, View, Share, Window, and Help. Select Insert. Then select Page Break. Select Page Break for as many pages as you think that you will need. I say make at least six page breaks to be safe. 
You can always delete the pages later. Then go back to the top of the page. Select the table you created, copy it, go to the top of each page and paste it. Now you have a table to make a split page script for each page. So the way this works is when you finish writing at the bottom of the page, you have to stop and go to the new page with a new table to continue your script. In Microsoft Word, create a new blank document. Select the Tables tab. On the top left, click on the icon showing a square that has nine blocks. Left click to highlight two squares to create a one row, two column table. You can begin typing on the left or right column for as long as you like and the two column format will continue from page to page. When you get to a new page, it just creates a new table automatically and lets you continue typing. That's all for today's mini media podcast. I'm Professor Esther Dillard. All content created in this podcast should not be duplicated, sold, or distributed without permission from Professor Esther Dillard. Copyright, June 2015.